All right, people, here we go. It is uh, another day, another dollar as we get ready for another edition of Prime Time, powered by wagertalk.com. We don't have any prez here today, which uh, is probably why you're still watching this at this particular point. We do have, of course, Tony Finn. Uh, Rob Vino usually joins us as well. Uh, he'll be back uh, next week, but we got some primetime games this week. We thought it would be ridiculous if we were held hostage by the Prez and his uh, availability. So we said, you know what? We're going to power on. I'm going to bring you one of the best in the biz. Of course, that being Tony Finn, who's only, I don't know, one, two, three. Uh, I'm not a math major, but 65% of the NFL this year at wagertalk.com is pretty damn impressive. Tony Finn, welcome in, brother. How are you? The blind squirrel. I Every year I'm a blind squirrel. Amen, brother. Yeah. It gets, uh, it's been dominating, uh, to say the least, there uh, over at Wager Talk, guys. Uh, it's pretty simple to find them, too. It is at, uh, you just go to wagertalk.com. You'll see Tony Finn at Finn at Wager Talk on Twitter. And uh, let's dive into some of these games here, Tony, because uh, prime time this week. Yeah. Looking at, well, Thursday night football. Why don't we? My favorite team in the whole world, team I grew up loving. I'm also a sadomasochist, so I love the Jets. There's no way around it. I like pain. And uh, I am so excited to watch them uh, on Thursday night take on the Baltimore Ravens because I think the number is completely overinflated. It opened up at 15, 15 and a half. It's 14 and a half now, Finn. Now, tell me, is there any combination, first half, first quarter, team thought, any combination that the Jets might actually profit this game? Any. Well, there's all. lots of reasons why the Jets could profit in this game. They, they do a lot of things that are, that are uh, contrary to – or at least they they can complicate Baltimore's offensive success without I, against the run. The Jets are capable, um, and when they're able to put pressure on a quarterback, uh, I, I, although we both know that uh, that this quarterback is a little different animal. He, mm -hmm. He's uh, he, he he really had to hold the edge and 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 not fall for uh, you know the RPOs and those kind of things. But absolutely, this number is a little high. There's only one way in my world that. That you play this game mm -hmm. if you if you're on the side, and that is you take the points. There's just there's too many questions about Jackson. He's going to play. Is he 100? percent There's some question marks there. But this is a pretty pretty big letdown spot for for uh, for Baltimore, in my opinion. Yeah, it's a it's a big uh, letdown spot, Tony. And we've seen this uh, we've seen this before. I just you know it's a matter of timing, right? We've got these teams who shall we say, um, through 14 weeks in the NFL, uh, once the public starts falling in love with a team, yeah. it, it kind of changes the game a little bit. And I think that's what's happened here because you guys watching this and Tony Little Test, it doesn't take very much for the books to realize and catch on and go, oh, really? You you love them. Oh, and then it's a game. And then you get numbers like 14 and a half, 15. Uh, and by the way, last I checked, if my numbers are correct, they're not exactly a great team that covers at home the Baltimore Ravens uh, they haven't been good at all I think two and four so far this year at home I mean it's not great not like the Jets are great but it's always that teams with nothing to lose always scare me at least for a half. hell look at Eli Manning even he covered in the first half of that game on Monday night that's right and this is the time of the year if you if you do this for a living or you're serious about it that there are certain week 15, even 14, 15, 16, the last month, the last four games of the season, or three, mm -hmm. uh, depending on that team situation for week 17. And that is, uh, we talked about it before this, before we went on air, Joe. And that's uh, you still, you, there's even though the even though the NFL is a different animal than the NBA, these are the weeks you have to handicap motivation and what a team and what a team is doing. Mm -hmm why they're playing, what are they playing for, who are they playing for, and are they even playing? Yep, yep. Uh, it's a big question, Tony, you got to ask yourself in the NFL because, uh, you, know, you know, you've talked to enough players over the year. The questions yep. are, you know, for who and for what? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's uh, why exactly do I give a crap and why am I going to play for you? And uh, that's that's a lot of these games here. So you got Jets, Baltimore, inflated numbers galore here, Thursday night football. Uh, then we go to Sunday night football, and let's yeah. face it, I think this is a game everybody uh, everybody's excited to see because it's a team. Well, it's two teams, Tony, I think are very similar to one another, are they not? The Pittsburgh Steelers and the Buffalo Bills in this spot, both battling number five, number six seed, currently wild card in the AFC. Both play lights out defense. Both have, shall we say, questionable offenses. Is that fair? But it's still two and a half points. Yes, I, I think that's spot on accurate fair is is uh 
is being kind. It's and I'm and I'll just tell you right now, I can still be a fair and give you a fair assessment of the Steelers. I've chased the Steelers the last two weeks, mm-hmm. uh, playing against them, and I have lost. And I, with my record as good as it is, guess what? Two of those losses are fading the Steelers at this point in the season. Yeah. And, and I still believe. Here I am again. I, uh, what happened yesterday is, is history for me. Uh, uh, having a short memory in this business is really a, uh, it's, uh, an asset. And this Buffalo team has a lot to play for. They really have a lot to play for. Not that the Steelers don't, and not that Heinz Field or the Ketchup Bottle is an easy place to win, guy. Mm-hmm. But but this is tr- in truth. I, I I don't care about Connor or or if he starts or not. If you watch these Pittsburgh running backs. Um, it does. They have no. They have no yards after first hit. They are. They go down. Yep. Um, they got a quarterback that's undrafted, third stringer, mm-hmm. uh, and while he's performed well, um, this is. There's just absolutely. It's. It's. I'm not a big Tomlin guy either, yeah. uh, Joe. I don't know about you, but you got to give credit where credit's due. This team has found. They do what they've done for years, and they've done it. Uh, it's. It's been difficult. Much more difficult this year without. Big Ben, and without a few other pieces, but right. uh, Juju out too, or maybe. How, I don't know how anyone uh, can play Pittsburgh here unless you, you're, unless it's, it's a situational play and a gut play, because it's sure not a matchup play. No, it is absolutely not a matchup play, not something uh, I'd be excited about. But opened up as a pick 'em, uh, Tony, and the way we sit right now, it's a. Um, it, uh, there's somebody money coming in on uh, on Pittsburgh. Any which way you would cut it, Pittsburgh is uh, is getting some love as uh, a two two and a half points across some of the books now is what we are seeing. But I if I had to come down to it, do I trust Duck Hodges or do I trust Josh Allen at this point? I trust Josh Allen. Both two very well coached teams. Um, that. Listen, it's uh, you know it's going to come down to a coin flip, probably a last possession kind of game. Defenses are going to ball out. It's a low number, Tony, too, 36 and a half, 37 yes. in this matchup. Are you expecting anything different? No, I'm really not. Uh, the only way this is different is if if there's turnovers in the wrong red zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, if that if you run into a couple, three of those, then yeah, it, it could turn out different. You can have a total closer to 50 than you could 36 or 38. Yes. Uh, but for the most part, I'm excited. I really, you know, I'm not a Buffalo fan, and you mentioned that, that Publix or that Pittsburgh's catching some money. Let's be honest, uh, Pub- Pittsburgh is the public team between these two. Yep. Uh, Buffalo really hasn't been, a, they weren't a public team when they went to five straight Super Bowls. They weren't a, a, a true public team. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, I like Buffalo here. Uh, I'll take the points. I, I never recommend you buying half points, but this might be a situation where it costs cost you a little more to buy on to three, just like it does to buy off of it. But I, I might buy on to three with this total, and every drop, every drip of value rests in Josh Allen. And I'm excited about Josh Allen. I, I hope he gets coached well because if this kid improves his accuracy of 20 yards and down, if you look at his the analytics with him, uh, he's listen. He's as much a dual threat as anybody in, yep. in the NFL, other than Jackson. Truthfully, he's a little bigger, not quite as elusive or quick a uh, first step, but he's fast. He's smart, and if he improves his accuracy with that hundred-yard gun of his, then Buffalo has a, a real find there. I think. Yep, absolutely. I agree with you, man. It's Buffalo or uh, or pass for me in this game yep, here. I think too. they'll take care of business. I still like Pittsburgh's. Chances of uh, of squaring it up there in the AFC. I think both of them are probably looking at two wild card teams anyway, but it's going to be a battle. And keep an eye on the weather, guys, because snow yeah. sometimes favors overs. <laughs> uh, snow is everyone thinks yeah. snow is an under. Snow means defenders lose fitting, it means easy touchdowns, means more points. So keep an eye on that. And then, of course, uh, the Monday night primetime game, Tony Finn, we're looking at. I don't know, stick a fork in him. I don't know, Indianapolis uh, at this point, uh, heading to New Orleans. New Orleans coming off a gut-wrenching loss there. Uh, of course, uh, to the 49ers, they're going to be at home. Uh, Indianapolis is just falling apart, really, at the seams uh, over the last couple of weeks. It has not been good. And anytime you lose to a guy that usually throws the ball to the other team, like Jameis Winston, it's a tough loss. But, I mean, is there... Do you like this game? It's a big number. It's like eight and a half, nine here, Tony, for New Orleans at home taking on Indy. Okay, Joe, tell me. Tell me this. Hell, tell me they're only going to score 75. Tell me New Orleans is going to score 40 points 
You know, I don't have to. I don't even care who the other team is. That the other team can be God, and I'm going to back New Orleans. Last week, New Orleans scores 40 plus, and not only do they not cover, uh, well, let's just say they don't cover, and, yeah, and yeah. you know, they don't cover. In this game, Indianapolis has a ton of injuries. The uh, Brissett's done a great job in, in place of uh, the surprise, the surprise retirement of Luck, and and. In truth, Max not 100. percent They they've lost uh, Hilton. You're right. They are a, they're an absolute mess. New Orleans just needs to win. Yeah. They just need to win. So if you if you I I think both of us will aren't stepping on a limb by saying that we both probably believe New Orleans has a really good chance of winning this game. Yeah. Uh, but covering 10 is always an issue when uh, I, I think Sean Payton's the the best coach in the NFL. I think he's the best. Yes. With uh, above and beyond all of the rest, I like I like Pete too, in Seattle. But um, he does he could care less about covering this yeah. guy. Could and if they get a, a lead, they're going to do some things that uh, that that gamers like you and I might not like if yep. we're laying nine. Yeah, it, it's you know non-conference uh, matchup here, but yeah. I can tell you it looks like both sides, pros and Joes. Look like to be backing New Orleans at this, pushing this number up to nine. Listen, if you're a contrarian um, and you think there's a little in inflation going on here, then by all means, you've got yeah. yourself an opportunity here to back Indy. I don't happen to think they're going to be able to get the job done. Um, I do think that uh, I'd also maybe even look at the over in this matchup here, too, thinking that maybe the Saints at home might be able to put up a bunch of points. And I think that if they're going to be playing from behind, that being Indy, then, you know, there could be some points uh, scored there to be able to hit the over in this one as well. After last week and the total, the 80-plus points that, mm -hmm. that happened between two teams who really have capable defenses, San yes. Francisco and, and, and New Orleans, um, I was a little bit surprised by this opening 44, Joe, yeah. on this game. I'm and with you. and you've seen already that 95%, at least my, my uh, wager talk showing 95% of the tickets the public tickets are to the over, and it's at 46, which yep. didn't surprise either. Yep, it, it, uh, and it shouldn't surprise uh, anybody here. Saints actually at home, pretty uh, pretty darn uh, good here for uh, for a long, long time. They should be comfortable, and they should be a little pissed off that they lost that last game. <laughs> so there you got it, guys. You got three primetime games to get excited about, to be, uh, to be all uh, profitable, and uh, really it starts by heading over to wagertalk.com, getting yourself with Tony Finn here. Go to the handicapping page. You'll see it, Tony Finn's page, Finn at Wager Talk. Can't go wrong. 65% of the NFL guys, I don't know, call me crazy. That's pretty good starting to week 15 here of the NFL season. Uh, head over there now. Wagertalk.com. Grab Tony's plays. He'll have them up there. He just gave you three prime timers on what he's leaning at. He'll have, of course, the rest of his plays up there rather quickly. Make sure you drop in by wagertalk.com. Finn, always a pleasure, you sick bastard. Good talking to you, man. Best Thank of you, luck Joe. with the plays. We'll root okay. for the Jets, keeping the fingers crossed, because, yeah, the latter I'm going to spend all Thursday night throwing up. So, Tony you, Finn. Girl all you girls in Miami, Joe's off. Run. Let's yeah, get out. You don't want to get in the way of that projectile <laughs> vomit. Tony Finn, wagertalk.com. Brother, appreciate it. Good luck, man. We'll talk again. See you, buddy.